quite a lot of people when they talk about colour they use a couple of phrases like colour correction and colour grading and you'll find actually in Premiere Pro it's often referred to as colour correction and quite often people mean the same thing but there are actually two different things colour correction and colour grading colour correction is really about dealing with problems to footage so I've got a piece of footage here that we'll be dealing with in the next few tutorials and you can clearly see that there are all kinds of problems there's a colour cast there's a massively oversaturated item, the skin tones aren't quite right, the lumen ranges aren't quite right, there's a whole bunch of problems that need to be dealt with and so we will use the tools in Premiere Pro for colour correction to deal with problems with our footage. However, there is such a thing as colour grading and colour grading is when you use the tools for colour correction or the colour tools in Premiere Pro to change the emotional impact of your footage. Now what do I mean by that? Well sometimes you've got some footage and you want it to look more urban, more street and you might say you want to desaturate it to give a, a sort of a, a gritty feel. So you're taking the colour out to make it look a little bit more gritty. You're not getting rid of all of it but you're just reducing the colours to give that effect. Or alternatively you might want to say that something is absolutely beautiful and it's a wonderful place and you just might boost the colours a little bit more, increase the saturation so that the colours just look that little bit more otherworldly. Um, fairy tale land or something and you, you might do that for say uh, a promo of, uh, of a holiday resort or a, or a country and you know promoting the country and you just boost the colors that little bit more to give a stronger emotional impact so you need to think about your audience and obviously your client when you're actually dealing with color grading but when it comes to color correction then obviously you're just taking your footage and you're saying this footage has got a problem I need to deal with the footage and I'm gonna sort it out whereas color grading is really about who's going to watch it and how they're going to respond in the way that you work with your footage. So colour correction and colour grading but please remember that people do use those terms interchangeably so sometimes people refer to colour grading and actually they're talking about colour correction and vice versa. Now before we go in and actually do some colour correction with this piece of footage I need to show you the tools that you've got available in Premiere Pro to be able to deal with these. Now there are obviously colour correction effects that we'll be working with but more than that there are different monitors and different waveform monitors that we can use to be able to look at our footage and make sure that we can deal with it properly so let me give you an example if we go to the windows menu up here you'll see that we've got something just over halfway down called the reference monitor and if you open up the reference monitor you have a floating window which allows us to see another version of the footage and at the moment the two are ganged together so if I pull the playhead through you'll see that the two of them are ganged together. Now sometimes that's exactly what you want but occasionally you might have say two pieces of footage on two different tracks and you want to match the two together and to be able to do that you want to be able to see the two of them side by side so you can ungang the reference monitor. That's what this little button here is all about. So if we click it it's now unganged so that when I pull the current time indicator the playhead through you can see that the two are not together. And if I had another piece of footage on another video track, we might then use that piece of footage as a reference for the one that we're actually working on. So we can gang and ungang. I'm going to gang them again. And rather than working with a floating window, quite often I like to actually include it into my user interface. But one of the excellent things that Premiere Pro have given us is a workspace dedicated to color correction and color grading. So I'm going to shut down the reference monitor and I'm going to go to Window, Workspace, Color Correction. Notice by the way that all of these workspaces do have their own keyboard shortcut. It's Alt Shift in this case 2. Click on that one and it brings up the reference monitor down here at the bottom. Our program monitor as before. Our source monitor is over here and our timelines here. Our project panel is just hidden below our source monitor. I might leave the project panel to the fore for what we're doing here and we've got effects controls taking up a lot more space the actual effects themselves are here okay so it's given us a lot more space for the work we need to do and obviously when it comes to color correction you need a lot of workspace to be able to deal with all the tools that you're going to be applying now before we actually get on and apply some tools let's look at where we can find our different reference scopes because there are different scopes to be able to view the footage available in Premiere Pro. Now why do we use these waveform monitors, these scopes? Firstly let me show you where they are. They're always found under the panel menu which is this little drop down here. See we've got one at the top here as well and you'll find the panel menu for every single panel. 
but when it's the source monitor or the program monitor or the reference monitor if you click on the panel menu you get a whole bunch of different scope options and you've even got one here that says all scopes so I'm just going to click on all scopes and you'll see down here I'm just going to maximize this panel so we can see it clearly we've got a whole bunch of different scopes which show us something about the footage and in the next few tutorials I'm going to be talking about three of these scopes I'm just going to minimize that again just wanted to show you where to find them and you can change between them simply by clicking on the various ones that you want okay so it's quite easy just to choose them just going to go back to composite video at the moment the only other thing to say at this point is when you apply an effect just make sure that you apply it to the piece of footage you mean to apply it to so for instance if I want to add something to this footage make sure it is selected and then we can apply the whatever effects we need to apply it's very easy if you have selected the wrong piece of footage to double click an effect and apply the effect to the wrong piece of footage so just be careful that you're always selecting the right piece of footage as you work through Now, in the next few tutorials we're going to start looking at some of those scopes and trying and understanding them a little bit better